I'm talking on uh, deploying plant tissue culture simulation use case for e-infrastructure. I am working with uh, Florence Akaneme and uh, Emmanuel Kekwe, my colleague who is present with me here. Uh, I'm going to look at the, first of all, the outline uh, for the presentation. I'll look at the scientific problem that we want to solve. Briefly talk about the first version of this application. I also want to know why plant tissue culture. We'll look at factors affecting plant tissue culture. We'll look at results from the simulation application which we have developed. But also, how this application is de deployed on e infrastructures. Then I'll end with our future plan. The scientific problem. Um, it's in the domain of uh, biotechnology. Uh, in particular, we are looking at plant tissue culture as a method for plant propagation uh, under in vitro condition. Different types of uh, and parts of plants known as explants may be cultivated. That means we could uh, get a, a plant part from the shoot, from the leaf, from the root, and uh, uh, cultivate them in vitro in the lab. And, uh, but because plant tissue culture is still uh, in its, its empirical stage, it's time demanding and uh, very cost intensive. The, getting the reagents to perform this experiment is quite uh, very expensive to get. Also manpower demanding. It, demands a lot of work in the laboratory. All this necessitated the design and development of a plant tissue culture simulation application that uh, would as, uh, predict explant yields using multiple uh, regression models as we were going to present. And then I briefly look at the first version. We had a first version uh, which we developed during the Green Gain Initiative, the H UNESCO green uh, projects between the uh, period uh, 2007 to 2013. We had a, vis a version, John was uh, a standalone version, which we wanted to adapt it to an infrastructure on the Science Gateway. So we had to develop a new version. That other version had um, a prediction accuracy of about 67%. And, um, it was developed uh, using Python. So currently, because we could not deploy that, we now decided to develop uh, Plantis 2, which will be deployable on the e-infrastructure. I'll move to the next slide, why plant tissue culture is important. According to Lineberger, who observed the following advantages of micropropagation of, tissue, of plant tissues, one, multiplication of plants into several thousand plants in less than one year. With plant tissue culture experiment, you can multiply a particular species into several thousand plants. Two, plant multiplication can continue throughout the year irrespective of the season. So this does not depend on the season uh, that the plant grows, but if it can be done in the lab, then do this, then after that, it, they are transferred to, to the plant. And then number three, uh, with most species, the excision of the explant does not destroy the parent plant. So it, it still preserves the parent plant even after extracting the uh, aspect of the plant we are interested in, either uh, stem, root, or shoot. And uh, the technique is widely used for large-scale plant multiplication, for mass propagation. And it's also, uh, it also helps uh, efficient disease elimination and control. So I want to move to the, we're still talking about, um, it's important. Unfortunately, uh, there are some drawbacks, as I mentioned among the, in the problem statement. And one of these uh, drawbacks is that there is no one protocol that we use for the propagation of all kinds of plants. This means that 
environment has not matured to the level where we say a, spe a specific uh, protocol has been developed. That is, you could say that a combination of uh, and why uh, auxins can be used to, to, to mass propagate uh, all plants or even a certain species. So this is a, still a drawback then reiterated by nine and the, the author said that, that uh, cultural requirements for the process of plant tissue culture differ from species to species. Conditions for a given species must always be evolved out of experimentation. It, it, it uh, actually involves a lot of uh, trials, a lot of trials in the lab. Then, affecting uh, plant tissue culture includes um, one of the most variable or critical factors in plant tissue culture media are the growth regulators or what you call the growth hormones, especially the auxins and the cytokinins. As we continue this presentation, you're going to see later that the auxins and the cytokinins were the growth hormones or regulators that were used in the lab uh, combined at different uh, proportions to uh, bring uh, the plant yields. And this is what this uh, uh, application is doing, that using the best combination of optima, uh, optimum yield for a particular plant species. Regulators are important in determining the developmental pathways of plant cells. This uh, hormonal combination is time and material intensive and running, it runs into several months of laboratory efforts because it is when you are able to find the right combination of these auxins that you can now say you have a call that can work for a specific uh, plant sheet, uh, time intensive, uh, material intensive. The modeling of computer simulation may be of great help in reducing the time needed to screen up combinations. We approach culture technique, we approach the requirement and costs are being developed, which is one of them is the plant is kind of the plant tissue culture simulation software, Plantix 2. And uh, in this section, will show uh, and the, a screenshot of uh, the results. So we have uh, the predictive model, module rather. This module uh, will first of all predict the desired concentration of oxygen and the cyanine. Like I said before, those so hormones you this experiment are the oxygen and cytokine. And then from the results we got from the lab, we look at uh, the, the different combinations that we have, and we use them to predict the, the yield before we can now go ahead to simulate. Then the input data can be gotten either from the lab experiment or that is from the lab experiment, a user could get uh, data from the lab and then this uh, application and uh, see what the results, the prediction will look like. You can also go to a repository, the site repository, and download existing data and then plug them into the application. The data is in an Excel template format. So uh, the the prediction model uh, uses the regression model with the equation is uh, here, where we have uh, the dependent variable being the, the oxygen, which are the regulators. When at the point of simulation, what does the system do? It computes the best line or the line of feet for a given data set and uses that to filtration mixture, which may not be in the data set. Now, this is the, the power of the application because the person in the lab maybe may try as much the materials and the resources and the time can allow, but with the, you 
not complete, which is not uh, uh, possible in the lab. Not being in the lab may give you the best result. Uh, you, we can simulate all combinations. Uh, this is the, the sample. Um, in figure one, we, we see the data panel where data from the repository to we have uh, with that uh, can and uh, in terms of the values for the different uh, auxins uh, that is going to, going to use different hormonal uh, regulators then in the next slide we see the output in, in figure three we have the prediction window listed um, at the auxin the concentration down to 0 0.1 0 0.2 and then you see the cytokinin, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and they are combined. And then we have a response on the last uh, column. On, the, on, on, your, on your right, the right of your screen, where we have the prediction result. This speed for oxygen concentration is 0 0.4 per liter. And and the cytokinin is, and then the output is 2.89. That's the estimated particular. Let me also say that if you go to, you select what uh, aspect of the plant you are working on, maybe working on the shoot or the tip, you do that selection. So the result you are getting is based on the explant, the part of the plant. Uh, then on the next slide, uh, I sh we show the deployment architecture application. We have uh, the cloud, the, sorry, the Lion Cloud, which is the University of Nigeria Cloud. We are happy to announce using this forum that we successfully set up a new cloud computing infrastructure for University of Nigeria. This came up this month. Uh, creating a number of virtual machines and we are trying to get the application there soon. The virtual machine for that has been created. Uh, we're still working on that. I'm still going to talk more on that with uh, Bruce and uh, and then down here we have towards the end of the page the plant is running at the Catania uh, uh, Currently, it is running there now, thanks to Mario, who has helped us to get it running there. I'm going to show you, you can find it as I go down. So, uh, the, on the next slide, you see the deployment application running on, uh, is, uh, on this screen. You can see it running there now. If you check that IP address, it's currently there. We're still testing it. As you try to log in, it takes you to a federated uh, uh, to an identity provider. In the next screen, I was trying to log in. It takes me to that place to authenticate me before usage. We hope to. We are currently working on something like this on the University of Nigeria um, infrastructure to also have this type of thing. We have. You see the, the University of Nigeria cloud built on Sinophil uh, stack. Here, we, we just created the plant disk um, a, a virtual machine, uh, deploy it there. I'm going to get the playbook, which uh, Bruce and uh, Mario has produced on this infrastructure also. Now, uh, we move to, uh, so I, here I explained the where and where these applications have been deployed. And um, why is this architecture? Why, why do we have this application on two cloud, two cloud infrastructures? The advantage to us, if we have it locally, is that we have we reduce uh, the delay for those people in our region, which we hope to be uh, a service provider to people 
within the Wakran uh, sub-region, it will be much faster for them to access this application through our cloud. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to be up in the Catania. So how now we future plan. Uh, we intend to a performance evaluation between to determine the prediction accuracy, uh, making sure that are, are tested on like this. Uh, secondly, we're going to take this result of the prediction to the lab to validate our claim. And who is, uh, is in the process of uh, deploying a number of uh, master students to the Finally, we want to conclude the deployment and on the university of Nigeria infrastructure as a lion cloud we are going to publish the results of uh, this in table journals and, and then i'm hoping to be in catania in may this uh, okay then west computing power of the lion and the group power backup because one of the challenges we have but the greatest challenge right now is availability of power this uh, infrastructure doesn't go off. And then I will also complete uh, the deployment of Shibboleth IDP and the service provider uh, create the IDP with the Lion Cloud. Number of scientists with applications for this uh, community. So um, uh, at the end of my presentation, I want to thank everyone. Saigai Projects, uh, Dr. Simon, Dr. Uh, Professor Barbera, Dr. Bruce, Mario, Wakren, EcoConnect. We are grateful to all of you and we are looking forward to uh, working uh, more with you in future projects. Thank you so much for listening.